There, it's one of the new recruits for the GGs, as you mentioned, Graham. One of 11 there in Amos. My <laughs> God, it's Amos. One of the new recruits there for the GGs in Phil Yon, directing that one on goal. It was a good chance created by Melody Bouchard, racing into the zone there and throwing it weakly on net, but Phil Yon was able to direct it goalward and cause trouble for Racine. Dodo then fires one, blocked away to safety. I was about to say this, the GGs looking very strong early on in this first period. At this point in the year, last season, they were struggling to get it out of their own zone, but now the Calabet have it in the GG zone. They're sent to the top corner. Loose puck falls back over. Still on the top side. They're going to send it around back. It's right through traffic. Around the net they go. They send it back down to the line. Still with possession in the top corner. Lobbed puck goes high up to the top side as the GG send it back down the other way. Oh, a bit of a trip there, but no call on that. It's a clean, clean play, or rather, actually, that will be called. Ref calling that, and they're going to be sending it off to a face-off. I believe that that uh, was a high stick there, Amos. It doesn't look like either box is opening right up, but GG's get hemmed in in their own zone a little bit there. The Montreal Kataban, not a team that's afraid to work that cycle game. Their team that have caused issues for the GG's before on their cycle game. The University of Ottawa GG's usually outsized by these Kataban players, so look for that to be a factor here as the Kataban look to establish themselves in, their in the GG zone. As they are still on the defensive, the GG's trying to regain the momentum that he had early on in the first minute of this game. It's going to be called off. For an icing, is he going to send it back right over or offside, I believe? That one coming all the way back down. Neither team making a move. I believe that that is icing, Amos. And the, these GGs are fresh, though, so that won't hurt them very much. I'm trying to get my bearings on the GGs goalie. Can't really see the numbers from here. So do you know who's starting in right, net right now? Yeah, it's uh, 29, one of the new recruits in Dubac. She uh, started the last game for herself, allowed five against Concordia. Currently has a save percentage that she wouldn't be too happy with compared to the other end. Racine has a 9-7-7 on the year, absolutely outstanding. And a blocker save goes in the top corner. Racine also has an undefeated record so far, winning both games, only letting in one goal so far in the season. 43 shots faced on the year. That's uh, a total that most goalies will see in a single game. So it's a big credit to uh, these caravan defenders. They really do a good job of clogging the slot as that one rolls in and Racine collects that one. She's an experienced player, is Racine, and I mean a staple. She's one of a number of fantastic goalies in the RSEQ, obviously graduating in Catherine, uh, Ste or sorry, in a steal and purchase, both graduated last year. So a change in net, and I mean, in net for the GGs as well. It's a change this year. And also Mont Levesque Ryan also graduating, so that's why you didn't hear her name. But a great shot goes up in front in the crease. Matt Scramble leads to no avail for the GGs. And that's Sarah Lachance. She's in it, in on it once again. She led the GGs at many points last year in scoring a team that really struggled to score, but it's uh Lachance's speed and edge work that really gives her the benefit of the doubt in that situation and on the scoreboard last year. Face-off is sent deep into the GG zone as they're back in behind the net. Lachance waiting for the puck, but she won't get it, though, and it's sent back to Hua, the team captain of the GGs this year. Puck goes right through to Lachance. Lachance on the near side gets dispossessed. Canavan receives it. That's Chasson moving back in the near corner in her own zone. Chasson spins around, gets challenged, but is supported well in the top side. GG's at the point, tries to fire one, but it gets whipped back into neutral. Just missed that one there, did uh, Kai Vale, another one of the 11 recruits that the GG's added this year. Aubin, one of the trios, the trio rather, of Bouchard, Aubin, and Filion. She's on the ice right now with possession, but the Cataban takes it back at the blue line. And they're going to be sending back over to the GG zone. Here's Duvin. Duvin passes one, fires one. Great save. 
was a big save needed there from the GG's netminder. The, the, the pass was played poorly by the GG's defender. I didn't quite catch which one it was, but I believe it was uh, Dodlin who didn't really make a decision, got caught in no man's land. The pass went across to a Karaban player and just a great strong push there by Dubek. Dubuque looking pretty strong so far in this first period, just under, or just, yes, just under five minutes have passed in this first period. Still a scoreless game, Karaban with possession and momentum. They get dispossessed. It's a one-on-two situation in favor of the Cataban as the GGs are back in the Cataban zone. Pass goes up front, but it comes to nothing. Outstanding move from Alice Fillon. Just put it right between the defender's uh, legs of a Cataban and almost created a fantastic chance. See, she had two GGs at the back post waiting for that one. And if Fillon's looking this strong already this early into the season, who knows what she will do in the rest of her U Sports career. Back on the top side, Hua tries to send it back in, but a loose puck falls right behind the net. Challenging hard for the puck for the GGs is Garou, one of the 11 rookies on the GGs roster. A lot of turnover on this roster from the from the past couple of years. The GGs added 11 new players, uh, not last year, but the year before that, my first year with this program, and I believe it was seven rookies last year, so this is a Fresh team with a lot of young faces. Lots of young faces and lots of fresh young talent. The question is, can this translate into a great season for the GGs? We'll have to see in the next four months. Caraban in the top side. Their pass gets redirected deep into the GGs zone in the near side as Dodelin behind her own net for the GGs. Regroups and moves it back up. She moves to the near side. She clears it around. As one of the Megagi sisters, I, be I believe, had possession there. Matt Scramble up in front. Kataban playing good defense. Another shot goes right through the crease, but no Gigi to complete the shot. Kataban once again with possession. That is Boulanger who passes up front over to Jamin. Here come the Caliban, Lefebvre. Passes one up in front, but is stuffed in the near side. McCaughey, Megan McCaughey, sends it back down, and Germain is forced into neutral. Caliban zone, moves up, up to Lefebvre. La Chance gets challenged hard and is forced to send the puck around the near side in the near corner. Sarah Lachance, a player that's all too familiar with some of these Cataban players. Obviously, she was an ex-Montreal uh, Cataban. Uh, was Sarah Lachance a good battle over here to just force that puck into the zone? She's not a big body, but definitely a tenacious one. Gigi's back in the Cataban zone, sending it deep in. But Duvin has something to say about that. She'll clear it all the way back down. Well, that's going to be an icing. That pass just took a hip and a, ska, uh, a skip and a hop over uh, Kaylee Quinnex's stick right there. She was gone. The Cataban looked very dangerous in transition here. Their defender's really good at moving the puck from one end to another. Uh, that is a ex perfect example there if it, that puck didn't bounce over the Swiss international stick. Face-off is won by the Cataban. And they send it down to the near side as they are forced to regroup with Duvan up to the top side getting it past their own blue line. The loose puck goes into neutral at center in the near side. La Ponce tries to clear it back around, but Chasson will pick it back up. Duvan sends it back behind. Back to her goes Duvan. Up to the top side, Quinec to Duvan, but Duvan was just too far up ahead from the rest of the puck and the rest of the crew. Gigi sent it back down the other way. Bouchard centers one, but it gets stuffed away. Hua, back to the blue line. Shot gets thrown back. Gigi's trying to regroup, but the Caraban gets possession, but they are going to be called offside. That was uh, Joni Garad. Thank you, Amos. Uh, Joni Garad, who was uh, in just offside. La Pensee looked gassed going back there. That one, a uh, little give and go between the two Gigi's defenders in Hua and... Uh, 
and to La Ponce. La Ponce got caught flat-footed after her shot was blocked. Well, certainly a much-needed line change for the GGs as the Caravan win the face-off in their own zone. Still a scoreless game as we have 11.47 remaining in this first period. Gabu Paran right there in on the forward check. She's a player that impressed at, at different points last year. She got some time to play with Melody Bouchard. GGs now in possession. Shot goes to the blocker. Racine with a good eye on that puck, denying the GGs. Sophie Garot, her goal, her first goal for the GGs, that is, of this game. Chataban with possession. Dubé picks it up. She is forced into the near corner. GGs picked it back up. Good elusiveness there from Gabu Perron. A fantastic vision to find McGoggy. Megan McGoggy gets dispossessed, and now the Cataban back on the other side with Dubois. Dubois fires one, but it's all gloves for the GGs. Good uh, attentive save there from the GGs netminder. Uh, I think a lot of questions were asked in the GG's net when uh, a player like Maud Levesque Ryan, a player who is an absolute brick wall, might I add, uh, was able to time out and graduate from this program if the questions would be answered. We saw Walker come in and she was unimpressive last year after transferring from Carleton, but good signs early. Good times early and Dubuc starting to look like Ryan. A redirected pass comes to nothing for the GG's. I was going to say, that Maude Levesque Ryan might have been the second best goaltender in the RSEQ division, just behind Caitlin Steele, although you can probably contest with me on that point. Yeah, don't forget uh, the quality that is in at least the other net right now in Racine. She was fantastic last year, fantastic to start this year, but I think there was just a glut of talent at the goaltender position in the RSEQ and uh, very fortunate to be able to watch players of such quality in the net. And that's why Quebec has many national contenders with Montreal and McGill both having national championships under their belts in recent history. And obviously the Caraban, a nationally ranked team, if I'm not mistaken, they're currently sitting at fifth in the national ranking. So this is a very good Caraban team. And might I add, some very nice jerseys on the Montreal Caraban. Going back, a uh, throwback to uh, the er like early, early uh, 2010s, uh, um, Tampa Bay Lightning with this look, the blue, the black, the white. It's, it's a very nice, nice kit out there. Nice and sharp and crisp. Yeah, those are three great words to describe these jerseys. Here's Sarah Lachance. Lachance for the GGs in the top side. Gets dispossessed. The Cadavest set it across the ice. Down on the near side, deep into the GG zone, but there's no icing called on that. Cadavest will pick it back up at the GG's blue line. Matt Scramble up in front of the blue line. Falls back to center ice, and the Cataban will clear it back down the other way. 9.33 left in the first period. Both teams playing good offense and defense at this point. Stellar goaltending from both sides of the ice. G Caliban rather, up at the blue line. They fire one in, but Dubuque has the glove on that. Yeah, Jure would have liked to get a little bit more purchase on that shot. It was a low one, fizzed along the ice. Looking for a deflection, but Dubek equal to that one. It's a great save by the GG's netminder and a great attentive save there. But once again, another great uh, set of moves put on by the Ketterband low to regain that puck. These GG's look a step behind early on. And that's certainly it as the faceoff is won by the GG's deep in their own zone. They're going to send it around their own net as it goes deep into the Ketterband zone. No icing called on that as the Cataban will have to clear it back out, but the GG's all offense. Bouchard tries to fire one in the crease. Their shot goes through, but it comes to absolutely nothing. Play will still go on. My goodness, Racine showing exactly why she has a .977 save percentage in this game, and also in the season, rather. GG's on the other side. Trying to regroup back with the puck. Amos, what a fantastic save there by Racine. The Gigi's big three and uh, Fillon, uh, Bouchard, and Aubin just all in, all three of them in the crease there, and no one could jam it past uh, Racine, who was spread out on the ice. I got to say one thing. I'm liking what I'm seeing from the offense from the Gigi's, but I'm also liking what I'm seeing from Racine as a shot just goes right past the crease 
just to the left of Dibik. But man, this game is looking pretty strong already in the first 12 minutes or so of this game. Yeah, last year I think the GGs tried to, oh, big collision there in the middle of the ice. Last year, I think the GG Sorry Amos uh, tried to be something that they weren't a more defensive team, but it looks like Yannick Avola has let his troops fly this year. Four goals in their first game. As the GG struggling in the near side, another hard fall goes through. All scrambling. Both teams trying to pick it back up. Garo trying to get a piece of the puck as they grind it back up down to center ice. Seven twenty-six remaining in the first period. Zero to zero on both sides. Dubois gets by Bouillon. She still has compassion and she shoots one and scores. What a dirty, dirty goal there, Amos. That was a, just a strong power move to the net and Dubois had looked uh, menacing all game. Catherine Dubois is the one who, as you mentioned, gets the goal there. It's a strong power move to the net. She is able to shake on past the GG's defender. I didn't quite catch which one it was, but there was calamity in front. And as Dubois came in to regroup and pick up that puck, she drove right to the net and is rewarded there. She slipped it right through the five hole of Dubek. And I mean, just like that, Montreal, the Cataban show what they can do in this one. Dubois getting by Bouillon to score that first goal of the game, one and nothing as the Caraban lead in this first period. Shot goes right through, bouncing puck comes to the top corner. That'll also be Dubois' first goal of the season and second point, one assist in one previous game, and there's a penalty. Incoming penalty against the Caraban, it's gonna be called there. As we're gonna be heading off to our first power play of this game, the GGs now have a chance to get back into this one if they can capitalize. Sitting out for the Cataban for two minutes is number eight, Estelle Duvin. And Amos expect these GG's big three as they come out onto the ice right now in, in, in to try and jam one home. They had a great opportunity just a little bit earlier. They'll look to, ca to cash this one in. GG's with possession, five on four at the point. Shot goes right through, kicked away. Chasson loses possession, but she manages to tip one in on the near side of the Cataban zone. At the blue line, another shot goes through. Hua tries to fire one, deflected away. La Pensée moves it up. Dispossessed to Cataban. Chasson will clear it back down the other way. Good aggressive penalty killing there from uh, the Ketaban and Chasson is the beneficiary there. She sends that one down the ice. A minute, 20 seconds left to go in this power play. Gigi send it back in. Second wave. Gigi's with possession. La Ponce sends it back around the top side. La Ponce once again. La Ponce, blue line, sends it up to the top side. Cross ice pass deflected away. Labelle well, leaves it in, but the GGs pick it back up in the Caravan blue line. GGs cross ice pass deflected up in front. Matt scramble up there, but still a loose puck goes behind the net. GGs with possession. Fires one through traffic, bouncing puck on the crease, rebounding, but no GG to answer the call. Bouchard was just way too far away from that puck. That one just didn't have enough sting on it, but as you mentioned, Gr Amos, Bouchard is able to get a touch on that one on, on their way through. That's the second or third time the Gigi's have had, have had success there with a high, high uh, tip slot, a high slot tip. Gobu Paron in the top corner, and it gets sent back to the blue line. Bouncing puck goes to no avail. That'll just about do the power play there. Todd. Sends it back up, Todd once again, but she could not keep her stick on the puck. Germain sends it back down the other way. Duvin shoots one right to the glove of Dubuc. Getting right back in the action, there is Estelle Duvin. She drove that net hard and drove uh, Bouillon right into the GG's netminder there. They took exception to that, but with four minutes, 37 seconds left to go, that GG's power play looked disappointing. They really 
failed to get set up in any meaningful way, meaningful way. couldn't get that Melody Bouchard one-timer that she's so accustomed to. Just a disappointing power play there for the GGs as they try and claw their way back into this one. Obviously, one nothing. The deadly trio of Bouchard, Fillon, and Aubin not capitalizing so far yet in this game. However, the question is, can they awaken the secret power within these three of them? As the whistle will be called on a foul, or penalty rather. Soccer on the mind. It looks like it's Estelle Duvan going right back to the box this time for body contact. Body contact, and that's going to be the second power play for the GGs. 0 for 1 so far uh, on, the, on the GGs. And as we were talking, the real Graham was here just talking with us and saying hi to us. Uh, yeah, Graham so. Naismith overdoing the women's soccer game. Uh, the University of Ottawa played uh, the Ryerson Rams earlier today, and it's a four-minute penalty as we get back into this one. But good to see my buddy Graham uh, swinging his way by. Yep. Very good guy, very good guy. Play-by-play uh, -play play announcer for the men's hockey for the GGs, Graham Naismith. That man is a treasure trove of knowledge. Yes, yes he is. As we head back into this game, GGs, loose puck goes down to the top corner. GGs in the near side. Actually, we've got four minutes on the clock in this power play. Rebounding, puck goes bouncing past the crease, but Dodo Land will keep the tabs on the puck. She sends it down to Megan McCaughey. Back over down to Vale, but she could not keep control of it. And they are sent back into the center ice. Already much better, though, from the GGs. And that's going to be a great save on that puck there as the line change goes in. Duvain, by the way, still sitting out for the second penalty, but this time for four minutes on the clock as we now have 3.15 left on this power play. Lots of chances for the GGs to capitalize, but if they're gonna keep what they're doing for that first power play, I'm not so sure they can capitalize on this second one. Big three back out there though, Amos, and uh, oh, what a shot by Melody Bouchard, but they'll need to move that puck a lot better. They failed to actually get any good puck movement. Bouchard. Moves it up, loses control, but still picks it back up. Sends a pass up in front. Redirected shot goes into the crease, but it comes to nothing. Loose puck goes back around the net. Okay, uh, fires one, gets stuffed, and the Cataman will clear it back down the other way. 2.32 remaining in this power play. Loose puck on the top side. Bouncing puck, Cataban sending it back down, doing some great penalty kill in this first period. 2.28 remaining in the first period, 2.10 remaining in the power play. It's the one real chance to speak up for the GGs on the power play it was a shot that was deflected in the middle or a, a, a pass in the middle that was looking for Bouchard. Total then fires just wide. I think that one hit a body on the way through. Garo in the near corner sends it back down the other way. Dodelin fires, deflected off the stick of Germain. A loose puck goes fired up in front, but great defense played by the Cataban so far. Look how deep they like to play. They're all uh, all four Cataban, nice in tucked below the slot, just giving those GG's point men all kinds of time. Dodelin fires but it gets deflected easily away to the top corner as they clear it back down to the GG zone. 115 remaining in the power play, 130 remaining in this first period as the Cataban is still leading one and nothing. If you can say one thing about this power play, it's been better than the last one. They've been able to move that puck a little bit better, but still not to the effect that they would have wanted to. GG struggling to capitalize and get on the board in this game as they fire one just wide. Up to the near side, cleared back down as Bouillon regroups, goes up to center ice, still with possession in the last minute of play in this first period, 39 seconds remaining on this power play. GG's cannot keep control on the puck. Bouillon with her great efforts 
comes to nothing, but a good shot goes up, rebounds up in front of Racine. Matt Scramble up in front, but the puck still goes off to safety. Slap shot goes right to Racine's glove. Good idea there from Bouillon just to get that puck right back down low. It's another scramble chance for the GGs. Once again, that's the third or fourth time they've done it, especially on this power, power play with just 20 seconds left. It looks like it's going to be a disappointing result, but much much more promising from the Gigi's uh, players there. They've been able to get a couple of chances in close on Racine. She's been a brick wall today, though, so nothing going in so far. But the Gigi's just have to keep getting pucks on net and ke keep getting bodies on net. As the faceoff is won by the Gigi's, but the Catavan pick up possession once again. They send it back down the other way. Ten seconds remaining on the power play, but it's going to be a loose puck. Catavan picks it up and they will shoot one, but gets denied by Dubuque. My goodness, the Catavan's, the Catavan's own Lefebvre was speeding past the Gigi's, my goodness, as the power play is over, 0 for 2 now in the power play for the Gigi's, last 10 seconds remaining. Duvin, back down to Dubois. Dubois passes one, stuffed up in front. Gigi's with possession, tries to keep it out, and they will keep it at one to nothing. Canavan leading, lots of great action, great offense, great defense, but stellar goaltending from both sides of the ice, but it's looking like Racine's getting the better one of this one in this game. She's, yeah, as, I, as we've mentioned a couple of times, coming in with a 9.77. That's a ridiculous save percentage. That is uh, truly just a deviance in the uh, in the stat line because they've played two games. But Racine has been worth all of that today. She's had a couple of scramble draws that she's had to uh, to deal with herself in and around the low slot and in and around her crease. But all credit to Dubuque as well. She's been outstanding when called upon. Yes, she's given up the one goal, but you can't really blame her when it's a defensive mishap that leads to it like that one before. It was way too easy from Dubois, who had another great chance to uh, draw level or, or draw the Ketaban further ahead uh, right at the end of the period here. But good promising play from both sides. The GGs look a lot more offensive than they did last year, and I think that that is what the GGs faithful wanted. Montreal won. You Ottawa 0 at the end of the first period. Stay tuned. We've got more live action here on YouTube audio right after this first intermission.
it away. Let's talk a bit about that first period. Lots of, lots of chances for both the Caravan and the GGs, but the Caravan were able to capitalize. Dubois getting by Bouillon in the near side and scoring, sneaking one just past Dubuc. Let's talk a bit about, the, about that play. What, what has Dubois done that was able to put the Caravan up in front at this point? She's just such an elusive player. Her, she's so good on her edges that she shifts side to side and a little move, as you mentioned, she pulled on uh, Bouillon where she was able to move the puck uh, first to her right, closer to the boards, and then to the left as she was able to, uh, to borrow a turn from soccer, nutmeg uh, Bouillon as she put it through and then went on and slid it right through the five hole of Dubuc. It's been uh, a, a promising game for the uh, Caravans captain, number 28, and uh, look for her to continue that as we're just about to get going. But as you mentioned, uh, Amos, it's been there's been plenty of chances at both ends, and it's promising from the GGs. You know, this is a team that struggled to score goals last year, if I'm not mistaken. It took them until January 1st to score their 11th goal of the year. So to be to already have four in the bank and to be looking as promising against a team that looks so good and is so good and is nationally ranked as the Carabans is a big credit to the University of Ottawa and to Yannick Abola. As we, we begin the second period, one thing that I always say, potential is one thing, realizing it is a whole different thing altogether. You should make a sign. I probably should, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All righty, now with the Caliban on the possession. Boulanger sends it back down the other way. But the Gigi sent it back down. Caliban zone behind the net. As Faubert with possession moves it back across the ice, still stuck in her own zone, dispossessed. As Todd tries to get a shot off, but a puck goes right in front of the net, but the Caliban were able to send it back down in the near corner. Puck goes up in front. Dispossessed, but the Gigi still have possession. And that is Garou trying to get a piece of it, but it's sent down on the near side. Garou trying to pick it back up. Hua trying to support her. Garou now with control in the near corner of the Caravan zone. Puck is sent into deadlock, the first deadlock of this game, but the GGs have a chance to shoot up in front. Goes right back to the crease, but just wide of the net. Dabu Paran was right there at the back stick to uh, tap that one right in, just couldn't get her stick on it. Once again, great offense. Uh, ability shown by the GGs. As the GGs have control in the Caliban zone, setting it back around the net. As that is Dubé for the Caliban, trying to pick it back up. She is stuffed into the top side of the Caliban zone. She looks a little shaken up there, favoring her uh, left arm there. It's, looks like she's going to head off. The puck has been in the Caliban zone for a minute and 20 seconds total. As the puck goes flying out of bounds into the Gigi's bench. Scary there, Dubé is uh, just making her way behind the glass. It looked like she got her arm cut, uh, caught in uh, the boards a little bit. She was shoved in there by, if I'm not mistaken, it was Gabou Perron. And just a little bit awkward there, testing her arm out. Hopefully she'll be okay. No, there's no body contact in uh, women's hockey and especially in the RSEQ, but this is a physical, physical game. Both players are not, af uh, both teams not afraid to uh, try and win those puck battles along the board. And as long as you're not laying a got laying a woman out in uh, the middle of the ice, you're clear to do uh, what you want. That's right. Hockey still is inherently a physical game, even in the women's sport in the women's side. As the Gigi's doing a great job keeping offensive pressure in the Caravan zone. Bouchard waiting for the puck. She managed to, manages to poke her stick through, but she could not keep control. 17 and 27 left in the second period. And this is what the GGs want here, Amos. It's to control the puck down below the, uh, the hash marks here in the second period. Use that long change to their advantage. We see the men's program here do that so well, especially last year where they were able just to pin teams in their own zone for large portions of uh, the second period. And it just really wears on your body because you can't, uh, you can't change. And a great clear made there by Bouillon. As La Chance tries to chase after it, the former Caravan, so she is very familiar with the Caravan's play style, and you can definitely see her speed a bit different from the rest of the GGs. The GGs are a high-flying team, and that is largely led by Sarah La Chance. 
Krasinski couldn't keep tabs on the puck and the near corner of the GG zone. This is the first time the puck has now entered into the GG zone. We are three minutes and 25 seconds into this second period. This would be the first time the GG zone would actually see the puck. La Chance in the near corner, still in the GG zone. They send it back up to the point, though the Caliban have possession. Oh, gets absolutely dispossessed, and here comes a breakaway, but oh boy, she gets tripped over, and she could not get back up in time. A great chance for the GGs. They could not capitalize on that. Lefebvre for the Caliban sends it back down the other way. Unfortunate for the GGs. Yeah, that was uh, Alex Cavella. Another one of the 11 new players. And a good chance up in front of a centering pass comes to no avail. No GGs to capitalize on that shot. The GGs, if there's one thing they have to work on, it's that. They have to be able to capitalize and convert on these centering passes past the crease. A shot goes right through just behind the net. And once again, the GGs struggling to score. They still trail one to nothing. And I mean, that's uh, the third or fourth good opportunity the GGs have had in this period. That one, it was, uh, I, I didn't quite pick out which GG it was at the back post, but if she just had her stick on the ice, that one would have been right past Racine. And when a goalie is as hot as Racine is, as we mentioned, 9 on the year, you've got to take every opportunity that comes to you. And as you said, that a shot goes right to Racine's glove. You gotta take everything that you possibly can against a, goal, a goalie at the caliber of Racine. At least you're not facing Caitlin Steele, who has an even better stat average number across the board. She's graduated, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, but Racine is certainly no slouch. As Garo on the ice at this point, and another shot goes right through Vale, gets a shot in, but it comes to nothing for the GGs. Alex Duran has looked like a much more dangerous player this year than she did last year, really struggled. Penalty on the play, it uh, I believe is one of the Magogi uh, twins, it is Megan Magogi who it is Megan Magogi. heads off to the box. It was a weak one if I do say so myself, she was just trying to reach in and get that puck, but Ketterman get their first opportunity on the power play. So her twin sister, Taylor Magogi, is not playing. I'm, i just seen her in the stands right now. So it's only Megan Magogi right now on the ice. And she's going to be sitting out for the two minutes. The first power play for the Ketterman. Let's see what they can do. At the point, it is Poitier. Poitier down on the near side. Duvin. Duvin up to the Lefebvre. Lefebvre. Dispossessed as the GGs clear back down the other way. Two great stick plays there by Phil Yon, an all situations player from uh, Quebec City. Lots of great talent from Quebec City in terms of hockey, both on the men's and women's hockey sides. Duvin speeding past there, but she just gets dispossessed at the last second, and the GGs will clear it back down the other way. One thing, uh, just an interesting note, the Gigi's have a couple of players from Sudbury, both the Magogi uh, sisters from Sudbury and uh, Lefebvre for the Catabans, another player from Sudbury. Interesting to see she went to uh, Quebec. Jomer shoots one, kicked away by Dubuc. One minute left in this power play. Poirier at center. Sends it right over to Dubois. Over to Duvin. Passes one up in front, but the GGs will get it, get a piece of it. But Lefebvre picks it back up, waits, fires, and saved by Dubuc. Interesting play there from uh, Melissa Krasinski. She just lost that puck in between her skates. She was looking over here on the uh, near side of the boards, trying to find it, but it was sitting right in between her feet and leads to a good chance there for the Caravan. Caravan are a team that very rarely beat themselves. So the GGs need, as you, we mentioned earlier, to take every opportunity to uh, minimize those individual mistakes. A shot that's absolutely stuffed up and it's sent back to center ice as Nadeau sends it up to the top side. Lavelle up in near side, gets thrown back as Nadeau will be forced back into the caravan zone. GG's playing some good penalty kill right now, but 23 seconds remain on the power play. Here comes... The Caravan, they try to get a shot off, 
as Dubé could not capitalize on anything from there. Ten Steady. seconds left on the power play. Sorry, Amos Steady is always the captain for the GG's number nine. Uh, wow. And here we go with a chance. Here comes the GG's and they shoot one. Oh my goodness, a great save by Racine. The cat have been with miscommunication there, but the GG's could not capitalize on that. Aubin, the rookie, maybe having a bit of nerves there, she could not get by Racine. As the power play is over, another shot goes up in front, and they score! Alice Fillon, the rookie for the GGs, answers right back, putting the GGs on the board, one to one. Rookie players you mentioned, but that not a rookie move. She sticks with uh, Melody Bouchard, who goes right to that net, and Fillon there with her stick on the ice and that's what you got to do we mentioned it a little bit earlier the chance missed uh just previously as well by oban but that's just great dedication there they win the puck back it's a great four check and as always melody bouchard you trust her to make that silky saucer pass over to phil yon and that'll be good for phil yon's first goal of the season she had two points the other night against concordia so off to a red hot start of the big three for uh for the university of ottawa and just like that, we've got a tie game now between the Caravan and the GGs with Fillon scoring the first goal for the GGs. They've really got to put uh, this game to bed and score a couple more here, capitalize on their opportunities, do the GGs. Caravan Dubois, dispossessed, but regains possession, sends one across the ice. GGs, however, trying to get the, zone, get the puck rather just out of their own zone. Duvin, up at the top corner, could not get the pass out in time. It's all Gigi's defense there. 11.35 remaining in the second period. And a high sticking is going to be called as we will be hit, heading off, rather, to a face-off. So Oban picks up the other assist on the play. Obviously the other assist going to Melody Bouchard, the primary assist, uh, might I add. So the big three strike for Ottawa. I gotta say one thing, we've got a pretty large crowd here for the home opener. Some of these fans coming over from the women's soccer game just across the field. That one at Matt Anthony finished five nothing for the University of Ottawa. My goodness, that is one blowout. GG's uh, women's team did go invincible this year. Rayom for the Caraban at the point. Rayom once again at the point. Passes went down on the other side. Rayom still with possession, but they are forced back into neutral. And Amos, if I could uh, just interject here now, the big three for Ottawa have 10 points between the three of them. My goodness, we are seeing them starting to awaken. The question is, are they able to awaken enough? La Belle for the Caliban tries to get a shot off in the middle of the ice at the GG zone, but is sent into the near corner. It's a great stick there by Bouillon. GG's, here they come down the near side. They are forced into the near corner, and that is Garo who tried to get a stick on the puck. But well, they are forced the puck into the near corner. A lot of movement so far in this game. Only one deadlock in this game when it came to puck movement from both teams in the near corner and near sides, or top corners and top sides as well, as the Caravan sent it back down the other way. Just under 10 minutes remain in this second period. Caravan with possession at the top side, trying to send it back down, but it's all G GG's defense. Yeah, just good positional defense there. Boulanger made a couple of nice moves, but to no avail. Megan McCarthy could not keep tabs with a breakaway chance now. Here comes Boulanger. A shot gets absolutely blocked away by Dubuque. Great stuff from her. Gobu Paron sends one to the near side. Bounced off as the Caravan keep it in the GG zone. Here comes Boulanger trying to get back in. She's breaking through once again. A loose puck goes up in front. Tries to flick the stick right as she was tripping over, but she could not capitalize anymore. It's the third or fourth chance that Boulanger has had on the shift. She's really out there trying to prove a point. Puck is now sent deep into the Caravan zone 
Jewer couldn't get anything on that. And the GGs, McLean will be back in this. Also one of the 11 rookies for the GGs. Yeah, a lot of fresh faces this year, Amos. But I'm liking what I'm seeing right now. A lot of speed from the new rookies and a lot of a lot of will trying to get those open chances, especially against Racing. Yeah, and usually when a young team plays against an experienced team like uh, the Montreal Caterpillar, there's a couple of nerves, but it's been a very professional performance from the GGs. Oh my goodness, a good centering pass up in front, but a great defense played by the Caterpillar. Fillion, one of the, the deadly trio for the GGs, couldn't capitalize on that. Deadly trio and the goal scorer, just a head full of speed as she came right through the middle of the ice. Honestly, this is going to be a pretty bad pun, though, but we've got Fillon, Aubin, and Bouchard. It's the fab three there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amos. I know, eh? <laughs> hey, when you're, in law when you're in law school like me, I mean, your humor get takes a pretty big nosedive there. It's all, you know, dark humor and everything that I'm reading all these cases and whatnot, you know? <laughs> Cataban now with possession. Clean play, it's not going to be offside as the Cataban will be forced into the near corner. Duvin gets dispossessed by Bouchard, and here comes La Chance. La Chance for the GGs. Pass up to Bouchard. Fires one just wide. Usually money from that spot is Melody Bouchard right at the top of the circle. Dubois speeding across the near side. She scored the first goal of this game. Can she score the second one for the Cataban? She is forced in the near corner, takes a hard fall onto the ice. Back to the point they go, Faber sends it back down deep into the GG zone. A loose puck behind the net, picked up by the GGs. La Chance loses tabs on it, and Faber will send it back in. La Belle passes it back down on the near side. Dubois sends it up in front. Loose puck goes up in front. Matt Scramble up there. Refs are not calling it yet. Finally, they will, and no goal there. One to one still between both teams. So scary when you're the netminder in that situation. That one's just sitting in behind you somewhere and you have no clue. There's so much padding down there that you just can't see where that little little, uh, little piece of uh, rubber is and it's sitting there and it's sitting there and the Caravans know that it's loose but they can't jam it on through. It's a great attentive goal line save there from the GG's netminder and good help from her team bailing her out there. Once again, as... Declan said as we finish the face off and the GGs have a potential break away trying to come back up with a one to two chance I'll finish my statement in a couple of seconds maybe I should finish it right now as Declan stated between the Fab Three, Filion, Aubin and Bouchard 10 points are between them certainly a very strong trio to look out for if you're any team in the RSCQ and if they make it to the playoffs this year if you're in the U Sports division. Well, yeah, it's concerning. I mean, there's not a lot of depth scoring on this team. Those three have uh, all the points for the GGs. The only other two coming to Dodelin and one other player. And I'll just double check that real, really quick. And it's uh, Garo, who has the other, only other point for the GGs. So scoring really being led by the top here. Germain for the Caliban. Fires one right to Dubuque's glove. Nice attentive glove save there by Dubuque. Her glove is right up where it's supposed to be. That's a textbook save. It's just in the right spot. And uh, as a Cataban goes to go rifle it into the top corner, it's easy as you do. You've got to stretch that shoulder muscle out every once in a while. 6.04 remains in the second period of this home opener live at the University of Ottawa. Face off in the GG zone. Won by Boulanger, and they'll send it back down the near side. Jour loses it past the blue line and some contact there. My goodness, but it's a clean one as Megan McGaughy speeds down. Cataban zone with possession of the puck. Tries to pass it up in front. Gigi's up in front. Could not get the shot off. And they are sent down on the near corner. A hard check there. That's going to be an incoming penalty, though. But it looks like it's going to be on the Gigi's. Yeah, you can't throw the body around like that. Alex Duran just too careless. Came speeding right into that corner. And there's going to be the incoming call against the GGs as they head back for the second penalty. And now the second power play for the Cataban. The Cataban is currently 0 for 1 on the power play. And the GGs 0 for 2 on the power play. Including a double minor for the GGs, but the GGs did a really good job of killing off the last one. They're not afraid to block shots as they proved 
last time out got getting their body in front of a number of them. And on top of that, just nice and aggressive there as we see once again right off the draw getting that puck out of the zone. So two minutes now for the GGs. Drouet sitting out for the GGs. As the puck gets sent into deadlock, or breaking off easily, rather. Cadavan just all over the puck right now. Duvan waiting for a pass, but she won't receive it. It's still stuck in the top side. Poitier at the point, fires one, bouncing puck goes off to the top corner of the GG zone. High flying puck. Duvan speeds after it, could not keep tabs on it, and it's going to be cleared down to the Cadavan zone. 113 remains in this power play. Gigi's getting caught on a change here. Jamin passes one up in front, but good defense played there by Hua. Puck gets set back down on the point. Poitier waiting up, passes up to the top side. One timer shot. Great save there by Dupuy, but it gets sent out of play into the netting. Smart shot there by Poirier. You just got to throw that puck on the net low, look for a tip, but Dupuy. Equal to that one, deflects it into the glass, in above the glass here at the Minto Sports Complex. It's the glass is low; they don't have the raise behind the net. So oftentimes, any puck that's low off the goalie ends up right into that, and for a faceoff. Faceoff won by the Cataban once again in the GG zone. Still with a bit of time left on power play. Loose puck, centering pass goes by by the crease rather. Nobody picks it up for the Cataban. Dubé gets sandwiched into the boards right now. Garo trying to support Hua, picking up. The puck in the near side. The third deadlock of this game for the puck. Killing off valuable time from the Cataban. 24 seconds now remain on the power play. Boulanger trying to get a piece of the puck now. Deadlock is broken. Faber at the point. Sends one down on the top side. Centering pass. Another great shot goes up in front as that was Boulanger who tried to get it in, but it comes to no avail. She's having herself a very good second period. A number of opportunities. Faubert, back to Faubert once again, up to the top side. Great shot, goes up to the dough, finds the top shelf, and scores. That was an absolute rocket there, and you hear Montreal not too far down the road, about a two-hour drive from the University of Ottawa, and the Cataban faithful all crazy. The wave going out right in front of us here in the press box, and what a fantastic goal there from number 51, Kellyanne Nadeau. Uh, for the Montreal Cataban. That one just as the power play expired, so I don't know if that technically counts as a power play goal, but it was an absolute rifle and one that just beat uh, Dubik right over the glove hand side. One she'll probably want back, but it was an absolute rifle found the corner. Whether or not that's a power play goal, that's still a good goal nonetheless in the Cataban, leading two to one. All of a sudden the GGs with their hard earned goal in the first half of this period is now back trailing by one. That is also Nadeau's first RSEQ goal, so big credit to her getting her first goal. It was an absolute beauty. Congratulations to her. Three minutes now remain in the second period. K Gigi's looking for revenge now. La Chance loses control of it, but the Gigi's keep it back in. Quinnec down across the ice. Here come the Carabin. Chasson. In the near side, boards in the GG zone, but it's going to be called by the refs. Missed the call there. I believe it was an offside. Yeah, offside there. No, no penalties coming. No doors opening up. But Nadeau finished last season with six assists, no goals, and this year gets rewarded nice and early in her second game. Already has one assist, and now her first RSEQ goal. Face off won by the Cataban Dubois. Tripped over, but it's clean as the play will go on. McLean now has no stick. Cataban with possession. 2.20 left in the second period. They move it back out to the top side. Dubois at center could not pick the puck up. Loose puck in the top corner. Caliban could not capitalize it. It was a slow-moving puck, but a bit of an odd shenanigans there as Rayom in the near side clears it back down. GG zone. GG's regroup. Krasinski. 
Back over in the near corner. Krasinski once again sends it across the ice. Deep clear back to the Catavan zone. Bouillon. Over to Gobu Paron. Gobu Paron, centering pass comes to behind, just in front of the blue line rather, but Caro couldn't capitalize on that. 120 remains in the second period. Gigi's offense looking a little bit loose for wear now against the Catavan offense. But Hua fires one, deflected just high. That's exactly what you want to see. Low shots put on net. You're not going to beat uh, Racine with a clean shot, as we mentioned. One of the best goalkeepers in the entire division here and playing in a very strong program. you got to get pucks low. Good idea out there from Hua to throw that one on low, looking for a deflection. As we head off to the face-off in the Catavan zone, Near side, Hua on the near side, but taking the face off is Bouchard. Bouchard will lose the face off. The Caravan will have possession with one minute remaining in the second period. Up to the top side, GG's have a chance now. They are forced into the near side as Garon with possession. La Belle. Riding the puck near the near boards, or the near side boards, rather. Bouchard back to Hua. Two seasoned veterans for the GGs. 27 seconds remain. Caravan still leading by one. Hua in center ice. Bouchard, last chance, passes it back, shoots up in front, kicked away in the crease by Racine. And it's going to be stopped at 11 seconds as we head off to another face-off. Mad scramble there in front of the net again from the uh, from the Caravan netminder. That one just lofted onto net onto the net softly and just laid right in front of Racine. She know, she didn't commit to it, but was able then to uh, pounce onto that one with 11 seconds left to go in the period. As the face-off. One by the Caliban, the dying second. It's looking like it's going to be a two to one second period. That is it for the second period. Gigi's finally getting on the board, but the Caliban still have their number as they sneak in with Nadeau's first career U Sport goal. Declan, final thoughts on the second period? That was a period of individual mistakes there. Too many turnovers by both teams in the middle of, in the, middle of the ice, and especially at the top of their own zones. Teams trying to get a little bit too cute with uh, their passing plays, trying to get a little too cute with their breakout plays. If you're the uh, Montreal Carabin, you just got to simplify your game, get that puck high out off the glass. These GGs have looked dangerous this year. As I mentioned, they scored four goals last time and have already scored one today. So five goals in two games, significantly better than their outlook last year. And they've got some deadly, deadly players. But if you're the University of Ottawa GGs, you need to continue to that press. You need to get that puck low below the goal line and you need to dig away. You're a team that is looking to capitalize on a lot of individual mistakes that the Ketaban are playing or, or th that the Ketaban are doing, which is not something you usually see from a team this good. Caravan two, GG's one at the end of the second period. Stay tuned, we'll be back with more live action in just under 15 minutes as the GG's take on the Caravan in the third period of regulation.
Welcome back to the Middle Sports Complex live with the GGs against the Catavan as we go on the faceoff and begin the third period right away. Amos Vang here alongside Declan DeBarp. What do the GGs and the Catavan have to do well, in this third period? Well, the answer is stay out of the box, and that's exactly where the Catavan are going right to there. It's uh, Estelle Dubé, I believe, who is heading to the box. Or, sorry, Louise Dubé is headed to the box, number 23 for, or 22 rather, for the Montreal Carabin. And the GG's power play, which is built into this game, will get an opportunity right here. 0 for 2 on the day, but looked more dangerous on their four minute double minor. Here come the GG's. They get a shot, just gets by Racine, but it gets kicked away. Centering pass up in front, deflected away to safety. 145 now remains in this power play. Good idea there. Melody Bouchard just tried to feed it right in. I believe it was Phil Yon sitting in the high slot waiting for that one-timer, but just wasn't there. Good attentive stick uh, poke right there. Just look out for the fab three. Phil Yon, Aubin, and Bouchard. I am going to force this pun into this no matter what, all right? <laughs> I know definitely you don't like this, but the Catabet have a chance now. They fire one just high off into the boards. Once again, the fab three consequential trio right now at this point see if let's see if they can capitalize on this third period it's a great chance there for the previous goal scorer for the Montreal Caravan in uh, Dubois the captain was in all alone after a silly mistake there from the GG's here comes Todd for the GG she gets tripped over but it's a clean one and play will go on as the puck is deep into the Caravan zone Cleared nice all step. the way out high stick in called or rather it is not a high stick it was just negated. Just negated, exactly. And as the puck is deep in the GG zone, Cataban's La Belle will send it back down to her zone on the Cataban side. Back and forth action between both teams. Cataban gets by, gets tripped over at the last second. Jelme can not capitalize, but that's a clean one. Play will go on. Another great chance there as the GG's break down at the back. This power play has been all Montreal Cataban, which is not exactly what you'd think and not when the GG's needed. As you mentioned, Amos, uh, they're down 2-1 in this game at the start of the third. Jamin up to the top side. Dying seconds of the power play. GG's will still not have a chance to capitalize, and it's looking like an 0-3 now. That it is. There it is. 0-3 on the power play as the GG's in the near side Megan McConkey clears it back down to Cataban. Cataban's Chasson trying to get it out of her own zone. She picks it back up. Here comes the Cataban. Bouillon for the GGs. Bouillon playing most of her career with the Carlton Ravens, but transferring last year to the GGs. Still looking to find her step this year. She hasn't been fantastic in this one. Seems like she's a step behind. Montreal Caravan, Chasson, dispossessed. Dondo, Dondo rather, sets it up to the top side. Caravan still at neutral. Chasson chasing after the puck, but it's going to be cleared around the GG's net. Qua. Yes, possessed there. Play at center ice. Gigi struggling to get it out of center ice into the Caliban zone at this point with 16.30 left in this third period of regulation. Gigi's fire one gets deflected away by Rassi. Loose puck goes up, down into the top side. Lefebvre in the near side, tries to get it back down the other way. Lefebvre centering pass up in front, but it comes to nothing. Cadabin with the offensive pressure. Dispossessed at the last second. One more chance left, another shot goes, gets stuffed into the top corner. They move it back down behind the net. Poitier waiting for the puck, but she will not receive anything from it, and Lachance will speed up past it. 
Lefebvre chasing after it, but Vale will get into it in time. One of the 11 rookies in the GG's lineup. Cataban have a chance. They fire one, hits the post of the net. My goodness, we could hear that all the way up from here in the stands. GG, send it back, send it back down rather the other way. Dispossessed, back and forth action. Puck is going both ways for the last two, for the last 10 seconds rather. No side exactly exacting control or firm control over this puck right now. Yeah, it's been split play, but you've really got to argue that the Montreal Cataban have had the lion's share of the chances at the start of the second period. They dominated the GG's power play, and now, once again, right on the attack. Deflection goes shot right up in front. Dubuque gets a piece of it and sends it away. Duvin. Fires, stuffed, and deflected. Duvin fighting for the puck once again. Comes to no avail, a bit of a trip there, but no call on that. Krasinski off the boards. Gigi's got to be careful. Luckily for them, the puck was stuck right in the middle of a line change in front of the Gigi's bench, so it was all possession there. A deadlock between Labelle and Gobu Paran leads it to Todd's possession. Todd shoots one, kicked away, rebounds back to Todd behind the net. Gigi's always seem to be aiming five hole on Racine. They scored their first goal that way. Here come the Cataban with Labelle. Labelle wins against La Pensee. Centering pass deflected away. Luckily, Gigi's playing good defense. And it's going to be a whistle call on that. The net is off. That's off, and that's the reason why the refs blew the whistle there. 13-37 left in this third period of regulation, or as some of the younger kids would say, the time is late. It's a hard drive to the net there from Germain. Dislodges that one, but good zone pressure once again from the Montreal Cataban, who have been all over the University of Ottawa in this third period. The GGs have to do something 13 minutes into this period. Face off, one by the Cataban, the GG zone. They fire two of them. Lose puck up in front, and Dubuque could not see the puck. It was wide open, but the Cataban could not complete the shot. That one, a weird one. Dubuque th thought that she got all of it, but that one just squirted out and was lying deadly in the crease. It's uh, thanks to the GG's captain in Wa playing goalkeeper there to not let that one. Or, or this lead climbed to a 3-1. to one. Less than 13 minutes remaining in this third period. Cataban denied their third goal of this game. As both teams in the Cataban zone fighting for the puck and finally breaking the deadlock as the puck is sent over to the top side still in the Cataban zone. Here they come down the other side. A clearing shot sent down by Dubé, as she will be subbing off. Poitier at center ice to Dubois. Dubois dispossessed, but luckily is supported by Poitier. Poitier gets a piece of it. As Dolanet tries to get past it, but another high-flying shot goes up in front of the net. And you're seeing the Cataban, their speed and their aggressiveness, two of which, two attributes of which are the reasons why they've had the GG's number for so long. Yeah, I mean, it's a player like Jade Vicks who uh, graduated last year and moved on from the program, no longer with the team, uh, that would really bring the physical presence to this lineup. But there's still big players out there like Kaylee Quinnack, who we haven't mentioned much of today, but also Duvin and Dubois, big, big players out there who like to make their presence known. 11.35, the clock is ticking away now. Clavel for the Gigi, sends it back down, right over to Dosu, but she will have to clear it out for a line change. Cataban back down the other side, Faubert, Faubert in the Gigi zone, forced to the near corner. As both teams scrambling now for the puck in the near corner. Faubert once again, back around the net. Oh, a bit of a trip there. That's clean, though, as the puck is sent into deadlock. Oh. 
GG's back the other way. Nadeau, who scored her first U Sports goal of her career in this game, and the second goal for the Cataban. She's chasing after the puck, but she will not get anything from it. And Duvan for the Cataban will pick it back up, luckily, in support of her. Pretty free-flowing period here, Amos. Neither team uh, really throwing much on net, but the Cataban doing a good job of controlling the puck deep in the GG zone, wasting that clock away. But just like that, here come the GGs once again. They send it back down with Aubin. One of the fab three, but she gets dispossessed. GG's at the point. Bouchard, another one of the fab three with possession. Can this be the turnaround for the GG's? She gets checked hard and in the boards. That's an incoming penalty on the Cataban. GG's need to be much better on this power play. 0 for 3 on the day, and their last one, a disappointing one. Failed to actually control the puck within the zone. They won the faceoff, but after that, not much of note on that one. They didn't even direct a shot Racine's way with a score sitting at 2-1 to one with 10 minutes and 7 seconds left to go in this third period, you really feel that this can be a big turning point. This game, the ice has been tilted in this period heavily in favor of the Montreal Cataban. The GGs will look to level things back out. So Eloise Jour will be sitting out for two minutes on the Cataban side. Whistled on that face off. And will be heading straight over to neutral. That one cleared out, I thought, by a Caraban, but this face-off coming outside the leg, as I mentioned, those boards very low here at the Minto Sports Complex. GG's losing, struggling to keep control of the puck in their own zone. You do not want to see that, especially if you're trailing two to one with 9.45 remaining on the clock in third period. Dodelin up to the top side. Dodelin. Picks it up, fires one, stuffed hard, cleared back by the Caravan. 122 remain in the power play for the GGs. They have been 0% so far on the power play in this game. 0% and disappointing. They need to get this puck set up. Gobu Paron sandwiched into the boards. As Poitier for the Caravan will pick it up. But the GGs back in the top side of the Caravan zone will have a chance. Centering pass up in front. Deflected away to safety. It's cleared back down once again. Nine minutes remain in the third period. 50 seconds remain in the power play. Amos, a big thing in the game of hockey is uh, body positioning and uh, the body positioning on the bench and the mentality that you have. And here we go, the GGs once again. They have possession now with Dosu trying to fire one, just goes high. 25 seconds left. It's not looking pretty for the GGs unless they turn things around with a well-placed shot. Krasinski through traffic, back to her it goes. Fires one, goes through right to the sticks of the Cataban, and they'll clear back down. 10 seconds remaining. It's looking like this will be yet another uncapitalized power play for the GGs. And big credit going to MP Dubay there for the Montreal Cataban. She just stood up and blocked two riflers from uh, Krasinski. So big part of that kill has been the blocks from the Montreal Cataban. Just getting their bodies in the way. And the power play is over as Duvan now has control in her own zone. But the GGs all over her right now. 7.50 remaining in the third period. GGs trying to send it back in. Dodelin waiting for a pass, but it comes to nothing. The clock is ticking away as Dodelin stops it at the point. Fires one through traffic, rebounds. Dodelin fires one just wide past the crease. Only defender with a point so far for the University of Ottawa is Dodelin. This is not looking good for the GGs. They have to get back into this. Dodelin just out of reach for her for the puck. Puck still just hits the top of the board, but it's still in play as Dodelin sends it back up to the top side. Puck gets tipped over by Dubois. Dubois in the near side of the GG zone. She spins around. La Chance will pick it back up for the GGs this time. Two on one situation. La Chance in the top corner of the Caraban zone. Still has possession. Bouillon fires one through traffic, comes to no avail. Caraban back down the other side. Here they come with a breakaway chance. She shoots. Debut saves it. Denying Garonde the third goal for the Caraban. 
getting caught, caught flat-footed there is Krasinski once again. She, it's a shot from Dodlan that's into the midsection of uh, of Akaraban, and it's just a burst of speed that beats Krasinski clean around the outside. She wasn't expecting to having to go back the other way, and that time just beaten clean around the outside. Great save by the GG's netminder. As the face-off is won by the GG's in their own zone, 6:35 remaining in the third period. A whiff pass, but a bit of shenanigans there, but the GG's will still have possession. And they send it back down the other way. The Cataban keeps it at center ice. Boulanger dispossessed. Near side they go. GG's gets absolutely tripped over, but no call on that. La Pensee regroups with Roy. Team captain of the GG's with 6.05 remaining. GG's need something, and they need something quick. A firing wild shot goes up, deflected away to safety. Filion, <laughs> no chance to keep tabs on the puck as Poitier back over to Boulanger for the Caravan. They fire one, kicked away by Dubuque. Huck is sending the deadlock now deep in the GG zone at the top corner. GG's break off the offensive momentum now. Two on one situation. Gobu Paran loses possession. You cannot lose chances like that if you're the GG's. Firing shot, LaBelle will send it right to the glove of Dubuque. It's a big glove save there. She just sticks her, her glove hand up and makes that snag. Lost it when she came down with it, but good job. Remaining calm and aware and putting her glove right back onto that one to freeze it up. She's, she's done everything that she's needed to do today, uh, has Dubuk, but just hasn't been, in, been enough. You know, usually when you only allow two goals, your team is in there with, with the goal support. And the GGs have showed that they can score goals. Four goals scored against Concordia, and uh, they've had a number of chances here. This has just been a game that I think the GGs will rue their chances. GG's after the faceoff will send it over to the neutral zone. Cross ice pass goes to nobody as Nadeau for the Caravan off the boards. Dodelin sends it back into the Caravan zone. Less than five minutes remain. Things are looking pretty grim now for the GG's. Still plenty of time. GG's. Regrouping in their own zone. Crowd's going pretty quiet right now as things are getting a bit nerve-wracking now. Smart playing here from the Montreal Caravan, not taking too many risks. Forward, four minutes, 24 seconds left to go. They lead this one two to one, but a team that's maintained their defensive solidity. Dodele across the ice in her own zone, a 4-13. As the puck is kept in the near side, Quinnette gets a piece of it at neutral. Todd for the GG sends it back over to Kobu Paran, but that's going to be called offside by the refs. Yeah, GG's head coach uh, Yannick Avola has been here for a little bit for a little while, and just talking after the game against uh, against Concordia, he called it one to learn from, and I mean, I think this one once again one that they can learn from the GG's had their opportunities in this one just failed to capitalize and that's true whether or not they win this game too Dubois sends one up in front but a loose puck gets thrown away deflecting all the momentum away from the Catavan's offense here come the GG's in the top side sends it across the ice to, to center they've got some passes but they've got bad reception especially in the third period of this game. And that's probably the reason why the GGs have been struggling to capitalize, despite the fact that they've had so many great chances. And now with an incoming penalty now against the GGs, things are looking very, very bad. It was just a delayed offside right there. Nice love save there. Nice love save, thank you for the correction. Uh, Declan, as it's just gonna be an offside, luckily for the GGs, Things weren't, weren't going to look too grim just yet, but 3.09, they're gonna have to pull one in. But as the old saying goes, it's not over until it's over. Poitier 
taking up the puck after the faceoff. Gigi's will keep it out of their own zone. Here comes Aubin. Aubin off to the top side. Aubin behind the net now. Loose puck. Bouchard tries to, to support her up, but the puck is sent deep into the GG zone. No icing on that, though, as 2.40 remain in the third period. This has been a scoreless period so far. Two thirty now remain as the Caliban being able to, to wave off every single bit of offensive momentum from the GGs as Duvan in the near side lobs one high. It goes straight to Dubuque's glove. And they'll stop play there. It's not enough risk taking here from the University of Ottawa. There's two minutes, 17 seconds left. Both teams up on their feet. As you can hear in the background, the Montreal Caraban players jarring their sticks against those boards, pushing their troops on to close this one out. The G's have had their chances just have been a disappointing outfit here in the third period. Couldn't carry the promise that they had in the second. As we hit the two minute mark of this third period, GG's with possession. Up to the top side. Megan McCaughey chases after it, but she's all by herself right now. And it's all Caraban. They'll pick it back up now as the GGs have a line change. Now they fire a shot, but it goes way high into the netting. I think that one took a deflection off Boulanger on the way. She's having herself a fantastic game. Number 55 for the Montreal Caraban. Just a fantastic player out there. A player with uh, very soft hands. She has a deft touch on that puck and is able to uh, schmangle her way around a couple of GGs. And she's done it a couple of times. Dipsy doodling all over the place. And that time getting in front of a shot. It looks like a timeout here from Gigi's head coach, Yannick Avola, as he tries to push his troops forward for the last minute and 48 seconds. And that's the first timeout called in this game. Noting that there's also, I believe, an empty net coming in. I think it counted six players now as the Gigi's will hope to push for that one equalizing goal to make the... Five second mark. Uh, that well, um, Megan with an H on Twitter does does a lot of great work with goalie pulling, and this one with a minute forty eight second as Yannick Avola rolls the dice. You know, you never know what happens. 146 remains, but it's not over until it's over. Can the GGs pull a quick one and be and surpass the time is taken away. 133 remains. Six on five. GGs. Yaro tries to pick a piece of the puck, but. It is sent back up to center ice. Bouchard is dispossessed, but luckily Gobuparan has a piece of it. 118 now left in the third period. Gigi's half possession, but is absolutely intercepted. But Hua luckily is there in time. Dubois has a piece of the puck. LaBelle tries to clear it back down, but Hua still has possession. As the Caliban, I believe, is going to be called offside on this one with just 101 left in this final period of regulation. Yeah, the captain and goal scorer 
The captain and goal scorer just going offside. There she had an opportunity to ice this game. Obviously one minute left to go here and uh, in a 2-1 game it's been nice and tight but all credit goes to the Montreal Caravan. And we have video back on in the final minute of play, so hopefully you guys can enjoy just a little bit of video action. But here we go, two to one still, Dodelin. Another whistle call is gonna be called offside now against the GGs. You cannot have these kinds of calls against you with 50.8 seconds left. Yeah, it almost feels like the uh, Montreal Carabana, the player, are the, are the team that has an extra player out there. The GGs just can't get into the zone. They, ref they seem to refuse to dump this one Deep trying to catch the Ketaban flat-footed, and I mean, it, they've wasted a whole minute and 35 seconds at this point now just trying to get the puck in the zone. Gigi struggling at this part. 35 seconds left. Ketaban, half possession. Duvin, is this the final nail in the coffin? They have possession. Chasson loses possession. Dodelin tries to chase after it. One more chance, a pass, but my goodness, they could not keep tabs on the puck on that pass. These are crucial passes for the GGs, and the Caliban now have a chance. 15 seconds left as they head back down the other way. Chasson with possession. She misses the net. Nine seconds left. They're going to have to need a miracle for this one, but it's looking like too little too late as the Caliban will win this home opener giving the GGs their second consecutive loss in this season so far. Declan, final thoughts? It's been a tough start for the University of Ottawa. They played two very difficult teams and they played two, two very difficult teams very well. You know, there's a lot of credit to go to both teams here and I think if Racine wasn't as good as she was in this game, the script could have been flipped very much the other way. She made a number of crucial saves in that second period when the GGs were really trying to storm the net and trying to uh, break loose and break this game wide open, but she was there for every single one. As we mentioned a couple of times, came in with an astounding 9-7-7 into this game, but the Caravan emerged victorious, and that's largely due to a very poor third period from the University of Ottawa. They just couldn't get anything going, controlled start to finish from Mon by Montreal, and I, I don't even think that there were many whistles. They just kept that puck along the boards and bled that clock. It was unfortunate for the GGs, but it was a great game played by both sides. But on this one, the Montreal Caravan will win 2-1 to one against the GGs. Thank you so much for listening to our broadcast of this home opener. My name is Amos Vang alongside Declan LeBart. We'll see you at our next home game. I don't have the schedule with me right now, but we'll see you whenever that is. Go to ggs.ca for more information on your GGs sports teams all across the network. Until next time, good afternoon.